Hey YouTube, Ryan here, and this is a part of a three-part video series that I'm putting together for training your technical skills, your physical skills, and your mental skills for Ultimate Frisbee. This is the only drill you're not going to need a Frisbee for or any kind of space. You're just going to be doing it all in your head. And this is also something that I'm going to be covering in the virtual training that I'm doing with a group of you. So if you want to join up for some virtual training, you can check out the link below. Let's get right into the drill. So. All you're going to need is 10 minutes of quiet where you're not going to really be interrupted by anybody. So if you can find a space maybe in your, in your car or in your room where you can kind of close the door, you're going to need about 10 minutes for this drill. So once you've done that, the first thing you can do is just take a seat, take a couple deep breaths. It's going to be kind of like meditation. If anybody, if you guys are doing meditation, this is going to be familiar. So you can close your eyes and let's take some deep breaths through the nose out through the mouth we're just going to start getting a bit relaxed and in touch with what's going on in our bodies settling the body can be a great way to settle the mind and training for frisbee as funny as it might seem to be doing that sitting in your living room can actually start with getting a nice grounded practice going outside of the frisbee pitch so that when you're playing the game and a high stress situation comes up you've actually done the work to know how to manage that stress in real time so that you can still perform at your highest so that's why training the mind is a good idea so let's get back to our breathing in through the nose out through the mouth now training your mind can be uh, a little bit uncomfortable. And that's why the title of the blog post that accompanies this technique, this drill, is three drills that beginner Frisbee players hate. <laughs> and this is certainly one of them. Because I'm gonna ask you to try to think about a stressful, embarrassing, or otherwise kind of negative thing that happened in Ultimate Frisbee for you. So it could be just something as simple as dropping the disc, or it could be something that hasn't happened yet that you're afraid of happening. So maybe you're starting on a new team and you're afraid of making mistakes or letting your team down. These are very common things. I feel them all the time. So we might as well work with them here so that when we go to play Frisbee, we're prepared. So let's uh, come back to our breathing and think about whatever situation you might be um, grappling with here or struggling with. And when you bring this to mind, so I'm going to give you a second to, to bring to mind the stressful situation that has happened or that you're afraid might happen. It doesn't have to be stressful. It can be embarrassing or frightening or just any any situation that you're imagining that might not be pleasant and try to in bringing this situation to mind try to um, try to connect with whatever emotions or feelings are, are arising when you are bringing this situation to your mind and when the emotion or feeling arises, see if you can also pinpoint it in the body. So for me, I tend to experience fear, stress uh, as, a, as a tightening in my chest. And then if it's more specific, like anxiety, I actually feel that in my throat. So for me, um, if I'm picturing, picturing a situation that's higher stress, I can think of maybe a, a finals game where, um, there's been a foul and I'm the one with the disc and it's coming in at stall count five or something like this. So it's, it's a pretty high stakes situation and I'm feeling anxious. I'm feeling tightness in the chest. So try to frame the feeling for yourself as well. If you have a feeling like this arising, you can say, um, blank, is arising, I feel it blank. 
So for me, anxiety is arising. I feel it in the throat. So I'll give you a second to do that for yourself. Blank is arising and I feel it blank. So now that we've identified a, an afflictive emotion or feeling that might arise or has arisen as a result of a situation that you're picturing with Ultimate Frisbee or, or something that's actually happened, working with that negative thought and feeling combination um, is very simple. So the next piece is to simply observe as closely as we can the feelings without trying to avoid or to change them. So for me, if I'm still feeling tightness and, and kind of like a combination of, yeah, maybe some tightness in the chest and maybe some constrictive uh, feelings in the throat from anxiety, I'm just being with those feelings, not as those feelings. I'm, I'm kind of watching them, but I'm not identifying, I'm being careful not to identify as those feelings. And to clarify what I mean there, I am not anxious, I'm feeling anxiety arising. I am not stressed, I feel the sensation of tightness in my chest. The difference here is that when you don't identify as the afflictive feeling or emotion, it gives you a position outside of that feeling from which you can observe it. It's harder to observe something when you are it. And now, as we are sitting and observing these challenging thoughts and feelings, we're just noting whether there is any change. Are they shifting? Are they getting more intense? Are they getting less intense? Me personally, I'm actually feeling the wave of initial tightness and and uh, stress is actually, it's subsiding. Uh, and for you, it doesn't have to, it can still kind of linger and that's totally fine. All we're going for here is a feeling of kind of holding the, uh, the tough, the afflictive thoughts and feelings almost as you would like a small animal, and I actually happen to have a kitten right here. So we can use this kitten as a uh, kind of a metaphor for how you would think about these afflictive thoughts and feelings. They're separate from us, they are small, they're vulnerable, and they're things to be held with tenderness and with love and not things that we are trying to actively avoid or to change. And it's through that acceptance, through that um, willingness to be with these afflictive thoughts and emotions that we become comfortable with them. And when we are comfortable with them, not as them, then their presence is no longer an issue. We can still continue to function and perform our duties as frisbee players and as people in the world. I mean, this technique applies to anything. You can, I'm using it for frisbee here, but I use it for everything else in my life too. It gives us a broader um, threshold for holding and accepting the arising of temporary afflictive feelings. So that's as far as we're going to get with this video. It's already gotten uh, pretty long, but again, if you are interested in this kind of thing and it helped and you want to do a little more in-person training, I mean virtual in-person training, you can check out the group that I'm setting up where you can register below. 
and uh, otherwise, happy hunting on the stressful, uh, afflictive feelings front, because eventually you're going to be looking for these afflictive thoughts, these challenging feelings, and realizing that by broadening that comfort zone, you're actually living, you're actually living a much uh, less reactive life and much more of a, um, you're living from a place of abiding well-being for the most part as you continue to iterate through this process. So best wishes for this upcoming season. If you guys are doing some Ultimate Frisbee playing, uh, if you have any questions or comments about this exercise or want to see any of the other techniques for limbering up the body before the games or um, what was the other one I was talking about? Oh, some techniques for working out the hands, getting the hands all strong and ready for Frisbee. Make sure to check out the blog post, which I will also link in this video description. Take care.